in a tangible way this morning. I believe it with all my heart. So spirit of the true and living God, fall fresh on us. I want you to get excited because someone in this room is gonna leave completely changed. Thank you, Jesus. You'll never be the same. Today is a divine impartation that comes from our God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just begin to thank him? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't stop. Just thank him. Say, thank you, Jesus. If you don't know what he's going to do for you, just say thank you in advance. God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Can you lift your voice? Sing, King of glory, King of Feel this place. I just want to be with you. Come on, sing from your heart this morning. May the confession of your heart come from the fruit of your lips. Say, King of glory. I just want to be with you. I need you to sing it again with all your strength. Say, King of glory. Feel this place. God, we just want to be with you. Oh, God, just want to be with you. We love to be in your presence, King of glory. Who 
am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love. Oh, his love. Oh, his. Come on, declare. Whom the Son. There's freedom in the room today, I promise you. I'm a child of God. Oh, yes, sir. When did I start to forget 
all of the great things you did. When did I throw away things for the impossible? How did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You do miracles. I'm more
chase the your goodness. I trust in your promise. Come on, declare, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I trust in your promise. Wait on me. Sing to Yeshua, Yeshua!
sing it again, say, our God reigns forever, forever, your kingdom reigns. That's it, y'all. Come on, sing it with me. Our God reigns. concerning you so we're going to sing it again and what you're telling the Lord is you reign over my life you reign over my marriage you reign over my children you reign over my finances whatever it is concerning me you reign y'all ready? let's sing it again I got reign I got I got Father, as we continue service today, I thank you that you will touch the hearts of your sons and your daughters to remind them that there is a place specifically that you have designed for them. Father, I thank you that no one would leave the same way that they came in. I thank you that your word will come with power and conviction and that it would fall on the heart, on our soils of our hearts, and that it will bear fruit in our lives forever and ever. Listen, I really want to encourage you today that there is someone in the room that you will never, ever be the same. You'll never be the same. I know I heard God. And I believe God. So I want you throughout this entire service, whether they're doing communion or they're doing offering, whatever it is, posture your heart and know that you know that God is doing something special for me. Can you testify to your neighbor? Say, neighbor, 
before you leave the room God is going to do something that's going to change your life forever find another person and encourage them in the Lord say hey neighbor I know you came in one way but I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you will not leave the same way that you came in yes life is tough but God is good yes that life is tough but God is good yes you've been going through the valley but God is good yes you lost somebody that you love but God is good and I will remain confident in this that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living before I get to heaven I will see his goodness I will experience the goodness of the Lord take courage take courage people of God I'm so sorry, Pastor, give me one more minute. Guys, I don't know if you recognize the enemy is trying to put doubt in the heart of the believer. Don't get news twisted. The assignment is to make you get weary while doing well. You think it is just bad news. You're just thinking the pressures of life is no. The enemy is trying to get you to not believe God. That is his assignment, people. I need you to wake up. The enemy is trying to make you doubt what God said because of what you see. but I declare it won't work. By the raising of the hand, because I know I hear God. How many, before you raise your hand, can really say, my faith used to be real strong, but now I'm starting to doubt. Am I going to make it out of this? Be honest in this room. I pray in the name of Jesus that your faith will not fail you. That God would send so many signs to remind you that I am with you. That I'll never leave you or forsake you. That even if you're in the middle of a storm, I'll go through it with you. The Bible declares they put the men in a lion's den. Hoping that they'd get chewed up. And they came out not with a scratch. It doesn't matter if ten thousands are falling on your side. No harm will come near your dwelling because you belong to God. There are privileges when you belong to God. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get tired in doing well. Guys, hear me by the Spirit of God. Get your house in order and don't get tired doing well. Do you hear me? Get your house in order and don't get tired in doing well. The Lord is with you. It feels like you're alone, but you're never alone. Don't get tired in doing well. Can someone celebrate the presence of God in this room? Somebody shout, I won't get tired. No, that was cute. Somebody shout, I won't get tired. Shout it again, say I won't get tired. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, if God be for me, who can be against me? He's fighting for you. He's fighting for you.
Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon? Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord? There's no better place than the presence of the Lord. There's no better place than being here worshiping our wonderful Father, our King of Kings and our Lord of Lord. See, I want that same energy that you had with, with the worship to stand up and give God a round of applause, give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. He is the king of your life. He is the one who delivers. He is the one who makes ways. He is. He is your Lord. He is your Lord. In Genesis, Jesus is the Word of God. In Exodus, Jesus is the Passover Lamb. In Leviticus, Jesus is the High Priest. In Numbers, Jesus is a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, Jesus is the prophet greater than Moses. In Joshua, Jesus is a commander of the armies of the Lord. In Judges, Jesus is a true and final judge. In Ruth, Jesus is a kingsman. He is a redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, Jesus is an anointed shepherd king. In, in First and Second Kings, Jesus is a righteous king, and he is a king of kings and lord of lord. See, all over the Bible, Jesus echoes. He's ec he echoes. So today, right now. Wherever you are right now, I want to ask you a question. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Because guess what? Having a relationship with Jesus and having the right perspective of Jesus changes everything. See, you coming here and encountering Jesus, let this moment change you forever. See, some of us, we don't know if we're going to make it out of this year. Because for some of us, the year has started rough. But let me tell you, Jesus is the anchor that keeps us steady. He keeps us going. He keeps us moving. See, Jesus is truly the savior of the world. If you need anything, it's in Jesus. He will satisfy your soul. He will comfort you. Man, there is no one like Jesus. There's no one like our king. See, I want you to examine yourself right now and ask yourself, am I truly walking with God? Am I really giving my all to him? See, Jesus came in this world. He gave it all for us. People who are unworthy, people who are broken, but yet he found value in us. And him saving us, it is for his glory alone. See, I want, to, I want you guys to understand that the purpose that you're here today is to honor God and glorify God with every breath in your lungs. See, I may be strong, but guess what? I am weak in the presence of my trials. That's why I am glad that I am weak, so I have a strong God who's able to carry me through, who's able to deliver me, who's, who's able to open doors for me. God is a mighty God. He is a mighty God indeed. If, if you are baptized, if you're saved, and you've been walking with God, please join me for communion. The usher is going to be guiding you from the back. Exit aside, please. Thank you.
lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken in the name of Jesus enemies defeated and we will shout it out shout it come on y'all help me sing God is pushing back the darkness lighting up the kingdom that can never be shaken in the name of Jesus defeated and we will shout it up you have to sing a little bit louder and say God push it back and he's lighting up that can never be shaken oh. the enemy's defeated
participating with us, please stand up. If you're not doing communion with us, please stand up in honoring of our Lord and Savior. And to remember what you have done for us, oh God. Lord, I pray right now, God, whatever situation we, we may be in right now, that you will deliver. You will make a way, oh Lord Jesus Christ. You, if you did it before, Lord, you will surely do it again this time, oh Lord. Lord, I pray that your power will stand and be with us for the rest of our lives, oh Lord. I pray that you may help us to stand firm for you. When everything around us is falling apart, oh Lord God, I pray that you keep us together in your presence, oh Lord. I pray that you keep us together, oh Lord. Lord, we can't do it by ourselves. We don't have enough power, oh Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you have done for us. And all that you're going to do for us, oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And he took bread and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it, gave it to them saying, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread that represents his body. And likewise, the cup. After they have eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood. Let's drink the wine that represents his blood. Thank you and enjoy the rest of service. Hey, our family. I hope you guys are having a blessed Sunday. My name is Sister Danielle, and I'm here with your church announcements. Attention, parents. Arc Music Academy will be starting soon. Let your child explore the world of melodies, rhythms, and harmonies in a supportive and engaging way. If you're interested in having your child learn an instrument such as the piano, the guitar, the bass, the drum, the saxophone, please see Patrick Joseph after service. The Arc Praise Dancers is back with their annual fundraising conference. The theme, the Army of the Lord. The verse, Deuteronomy 20, verse four, which states, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. For the worship and workshop, all dancers 13 and up who are interested in dancing are welcome. Please note, doors will be open Friday, July 5th at 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, July 6th at 8.30 a.m. The night of warfare will be July 6th. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. And this is open for everyone to see dancers minister from different ministries. I hope to see you there. Our church, join us for a fun-filled, sultry date night, cooking up memories and turning up the notch with Chef Natalie. We'll be including Chinese cuisine on Saturday, April 27th at 6 p.m. Come learn to make egg rolls, tantalizing magnolia and beef, seafood, pepper shrimp, and much, much more. If you're looking for something different to do on a Saturday night, look no further. Save your seats now. Space is extremely limited. There's only four tickets left. Sorry, this is a lovers only event. Price is $175 per couple. Our family, looking to get fit? Well, we have an exciting announcement to share with you. Whether you're a fitness enthusiast or just starting your wellness journey, Brother Don will be leading a dynamic boot camp class every Saturday from 10 to 11.30 a.m. here at the ARC. The session includes a full body workout alongside cardio and boxing. So mark your calendars and come prepare to sweat, laugh, and push yourself to new heights. We are thrilled to introduce something new and exciting coming to our church, a journey toward holistic well-being that we're calling Art Fitness Ministry. Art Fitness Ministry is more than just exercise. It's a celebration of health, community, and spiritual growth. We believe that taking care of our bodies is a reflection of gratitude for the precious life that we live. Get ready for a variety of activities that cater to all fitness levels, from invigorating fitness classes to informative nutritional workshops and even inspiring wellness seminars. There's something for everyone. No matter where you are on your fitness journey, our fitness ministry is here for you. We're committed to inclusivity, ensuring that everyone in our church family feels valued and included. But our fitness is not just about exercise. It's about building community. Join us for group walks, runs, and community health challenges that will strengthen our bodies and make fitness a shared experience. Ready to embark on this journey with us? Sign up now by contacting Sister Sid or get a sign up form up front. Let's make our fitness ministry a vibrant part of our church community. We can't wait to see you at our fitness ministry. Until then, stay blessed, stay active, and let's journey towards a healthier, happier life together. Hey ladies, my name is Rachel and I am the first lady of the Ark Church. 
I want to personally invite each and every one of you beautiful ladies to Flawless 2024. It is our much anticipated annual women's conference that we have right here at The Arc. It will be May 17th, 18th, and 19th. That's right, three impactful days and your life will never be the same. So get your tickets, get your tickets today. Don't wait, don't go shopping today because today we have a very special deal. If you purchase your ticket today, you will get a brand new t-shirt for free. Yes, sis, that's right, for free. So today only, if you purchase your tickets, you will get a free flawless t-shirt. We will be waiting for you at the table after service, so make sure you register today and secure your spot because they are filling up very quickly. Ladies, expect to be blessed. Expect to grow. Expect to connect. Expect for your life to never be the same because Flawless 2024, let's go ladies. Go ahead, tell the sis right next to you, get your ticket today. That's right, Turn. look, look at her. Look at her in the eye. Say, sis, you better get your ticket today. All right, ladies, I will see you at the table. God bless you. Bye. Noah's Ark annual color run is back. Please join us on Saturday. April 20th for a fun filled day. Bring the entire family. We will have t-shirts on sale, so pre-order your shirts today. If you want to volunteer, please see Sister Danny in the children's ministry. See you there. All right, our family, that's all the announcements I have for you. Make sure you save the date and I'll see everyone again next week. Bye. Good morning, church. My name is Sister Lori. Look at that. I'm here to introduce our first time guest. So if it is your first time worshiping with us, please stand up. Stand up. We want to see you guys. You see? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh. It looks like we got a full house this morning. All right, so the ushers are gonna come around with the clipboard. Please fill it out. When you're exiting, please hand it over to our beautiful sister, Shesley, and she has a gift for you, okay? So church, you know what we do when we have visitors, let's give them a proper greeting. Turn to your left, turn to your right, say hi to your visitors. <laughs> All right, guys, so I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. God bless. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good. So my name is Sid, and this is my name is Brother Rock, my husband, <laughs> and we're <laughs> yeah. So we're here to just clarify some things about the wonderful Ark Fitness Ministry that we're starting very soon. And um, so we did not put the date and time that we'll be meeting today. And so we'll be meeting, not today, my apology, I'm kind of nervous. So we'll be meeting on Saturday on the 20th. That will be our first meet up to um, talk to you guys more about it and um, do f get the consent form um, from you guys and the sign up forms from you guys and just question Q&A. And also, go ahead. As you guys know, health is wealth. Yeah. And I've been working as an ER nurse for about four and a half years now. And our people are sick. You know, we need to do better as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I love about this church is that we don't just focus on spiritual health, but we try to take care of the entire being of the person. Yeah. So with that being said, that's the goal of the ministry is to just help you guys with the physical aspect of the physical fitness and the mental fitness. You want to say anything? Well, thank you. That's it for you guys. Um, once again, we are meeting um, on Saturday, the 20th of this month. I can't wait to see you guys. And we also have the forms outside the consent and the um, sign-up forms. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, church. What a pleasure and honor to be in the house of God. Amen. Aren't you happy to be here? I, I feel like saying this phrase, it sounds cliche in church, but it truly is a word to me. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I thank God that we are here today to be able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is an honor and a pleasure to stand before you. My name is Madoshe. Um, and it's time to collect the tithe and offering. I'm glad somebody is as excited as I am. Because if we don't pay the bills, I promise you, we won't be able to worship. Imagine being in the hot sun worshiping. Your makeup would start running. My brother, that cologne would fade quickly. So thank God that we are inside, we have AC, we have fans, and you can look as cute as you want to. You could be as debonair as you want to, my brother, and serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Today, I want you to give your best to God because God has given us his best. Amen. Oh, I got five people that believe that. I want you to give your best to God because God has given us his best. Amen. Are you ready to give unto the Lord today? Amen. I usually... I always use the app for me to give. Uh, so I want us, majority of us here, if you don't want to get up, the app is very easy to download. I know the ones that have uh, Android phones. If there's an issue with Android right now with the App Store. I know all, all iPhone people are saying, it's okay, it's okay. It's not an Android issue, it's a Google issue. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. My Android has no limit in photos. <laughs> but listen, you could definitely use the church app for you to be able to give and put your recurring giving. And some of us don't trust technology like that. I understand. I understand. I'm the same way. When I share username and passwords, I usually put it encrypted. Like I'll send like 10 emails for a one username, just so no one can guess it. <laughs> I know you don't get it, but in, in IT, people hack things and they wait on key, keystrokes and all of that. I believe this week my wife got hacked. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was last week, man. I said, boy, that, that, yeah, it's iPhone. But that couldn't be me. But the, Lord's, the Lord was with my phone. <laughs> my little Android was safe in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> it was covered by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> but I want us to be able to give with all of our hearts, church. And if you want to use your debit card or credit cards, we do have swipers. If you want to give cash or check, we have the basket here for you to be able to do that. Don't forget our capital campaign. I believe in May we will run the capital campaign again, but that doesn't mean that you have to, you, you could stop giving. Like you could continuously give for the capital campaign for us to be able to have enough when we find a building for us to be able to snap it and snatch it in a moment and not wait for us to be able to raise funds. Amen? So I want us to be able to give with our whole hearts today and to be able to trust God that he will open doors for us. Amen? You know, I was telling them at the 9 a.m. service, I said, the more people we have, the more we have to help. Because as much as you think that we raise, but we help a whole lot more. And this ministry, and I know a lot of ministries, they do that. But for us, we don't, we don't broadcast it, the things that we help people with. For instance, if we're helping you, we don't come with a camera to snap pictures and say, look who we're helping. Look what we're doing. You know, we help undercover, and we, God says when you do that, he will bless you openly. So know that your church is helping people and helping the community. So trust God that he will open doors for us, and he will open doors for you 
to where you will be able to expand your territory, buy homes. Did you catch the S there, the plural? To be able to drive cars and do things that you never thought you would do. For your name to be put up on doors that you never thought would be in certain buildings. It's amazing what God is able to do with us if we trust and believe in him. Are you ready to give today? Yes. Now go ahead and grab what it is that you had in your heart to give. Let me pray for it. Father, thank you, God. Thank you for your spirit that is here. Lord, as we're about to give, Lord, I pray that you will... Bless what we're about to put into this basket or bless what we're about to swipe or bless what we're giving through our technology. But God, I pray whatever it is that it will be pressed down, shaken together and running over, Lord God. And then for people to be able to give right back, Lord God, into our bosom because you have touched their hearts because you saw ours. Keep us, Lord God. Open our hearts. Bless our families, our children. Lord God, our moms, our dads, Lord God, our grandparents, Lord God, our children's children. Bless them, O oh Lord. Let the generations that's coming after us, for them to be blessed, Lord God, because of the seeds that we have planted today. We thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The ushers will have you get up from back to the front. Please follow their direction. You will come through the center and exit through the sides as we get up to give unto the Lord. Let's worship God with our offering. For this moment of offering, let's reflect on the words from 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Your generosity has allowed us to make a meaningful impact, from supporting local communities to providing a place for spiritual growth. Your contributions have been a blessing. There are many ways for you to give. You can download the church app on all mobile devices. You can text to give. We also take cryptocurrency. Don't forget, you can also give to the capital campaign. With your help, we can raise enough money to build a church. Your financial contribution goes towards sustaining our ministries, building a new church, and maintaining the space where we come together to worship. moment of offering, let's reflect on the words from 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Your generosity has allowed us to make a meaningful impact, from supporting local communities to providing a place for spiritual growth. Your contributions have been a blessing. There are many ways for you to give. You can download the church app on all mobile devices. You can text to give. We also take cryptocurrency. Don't forget, you can also give to the capital campaign. With your help, we can raise enough money to build a church. Your financial contribution goes towards sustaining our ministries, building a new church, and maintaining the space where we come together to worship.
I know we were packed last week over at the hotel. So, so some of you missed Musician Sunday. You'll catch it next year. Um, are you ready for the word? Before I get into the word, I have to, any, any one that is 60 and older, um, you're 60 years young and moving forward, I would like to see you Friday at 7.30. Well, we'll say 7, because I got to get you home, because... Uh, I want to be able to get some knowledge from you guys so I could share with uh, young people because you guys have a vast knowledge and experience that needs to be shared and I want to get it recorded, ask you guys some questions uh, pertaining to life, especially some of you that's been married, divorced, widowed, and all of that. That way, again, Rather than repeating some of the things that we've done in life, it's, it's better for us to learn, amen? amen? And not have to repeat cycles, but for us to do better. So definitely, if you are 60 years young and older, please, Friday, 7 o'clock right here, I want to be able to talk to you, just you and I, uh, to have conversations and to discuss life, amen? amen? I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let's stand for the reading of the word. We're looking at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and we will read it together on three. One, two, three. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. But Jesus, aware of this, said, Amen. Before you sit down, tell your neighbor, let me worship. No, they don't believe you. Find somebody else. Tell them, let me worship. Let me worship. Let me worship. My goodness, let me worship. Uh, honestly, this is a very easy passage to preach on. But I wish God permitted me for me to just speak on it the way that it is written because it's a simple passage to just go in and ham on on giving God praise and worshiping, but oh, God decided to twist things. And I said, Lord, you are my boss, so I got to do what you tell me to do. Because in all honesty, sometimes as church people, we pretend like we're worshiping, but we're not. In all honesty, some of us, even in our relationships, we have gotten, uh, this word is called complacent. We have gotten complacent in our relationships. We've gotten complacent in the way that we do things. And because of that, things just start falling by the wayside. When I got married, I got comfortable. Because I got comfortable, I got fat. I'll tell y'all the truth. I ate, I ate, I ate. I slept, I slept, I slept. I worked, I worked, I worked. I did what married people do, married people do. <laughs> y'all, y'all looking at me like, you don't need to be married, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor. <laughs> 
the Bible. <laughs> but when you are complacent, you tend to be lazy. A complacent Christian is a lazy Christian. You get complacent when you get used to things, when you get used to someone. Are you here with me? Sister, before you were married, before you saw your man, you made sure that he never saw you in a bonnet. Uh, when he came to the house, before you opened the door, it could have been uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. For some odd reason, your makeup was already done. You look great. You took the muumuu off. But because you've been together for so long now, hmm, he comes home from work. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Just dragging yourself. <laughs> we get complacent. I, I, I just told you, I got complacent in my marriage. I, 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 I got fat. I, I got married with a six-pack, bro. Complacency. Complacency as a believer will cause you to get lazy. You get so comfortable with God, you don't even pray anymore. You get so comfortable with God, you don't even talk to him anymore, nor worship him anymore. Complacency. A complacent Christian is also an ungrateful Christian. You get so used to such a good meal, you don't even say thank you when you get it anymore. Because that's become the norm. But you should always be a grateful person and a grateful Christian whenever God does something for you, for you to be able to say thank you, Jesus. A, com a complacent Christian is an ungrateful one. You forget where God had taken you from and where you are now. Some of us, boy, some of us forgot how we used to be. We forgot how we used to act. You forgot who you used to hang out with. You even forgot how you used to look. Before Jesus, you didn't look like this. We look beat up. We look downtrodden. We look finished. It is in God he has refreshed us, built us up, and made, me, and made us look brand new. <laughs> but the worst thing about a complacent Christian is that, boy, you are a dangerous Christian. And I'm not saying it in a good way. Because a complacent Christian, uh, not only are they ungrateful, they don't want you to be grateful for what God has done. So they get jealous and mad at you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They do. Because while God is blessing you because you still have that great relationship with him, <laughs> they get jealous at you because they're like, well, who are you? Because you remember where God took you from. You continue to praise him. They look at you like, well, it doesn't take all of that. It's a dangerous Christian. A complacent Christian that becomes so dangerous, they're like that friend that's jealous of you, that's giving you bad advice to mess up your relationship. A complacent Christian is, a, is an enemy of progress. They don't want you to move forward with God. They don't want you to move ahead of them in God. They always want you to remain under them, but thank God for his mercy and grace. It's amazing. Jesus comes into the house of a leprous man that he had healed. The Bible finally gives us his name, Simon, but I'm not sure if this is one of the ten lepers that Jesus had healed previously where one of them came back to thank him. And this one that came back to thank him, Jesus asked him, "What wasn't there nine? And now we find him in the house of a former leprous man. And while he's there, the man invited Jesus into his house to come and eat. Unlike short man that climbed a sycamore tree. 
unlike that we little man we sung about, Zacchaeus, where he said, I am going to your house. The leprous man didn't wait for Jesus to invite himself. He said, no, 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 I remember what Jesus did for me. I need you to come to my house. How many of y'all are going to invite Jesus into your house today? When you remember what he's done for you, how many of you will come? Say, Jesus, come in my house. No, 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 no. But some of us don't want Jesus in your house. Because when Jesus comes in our house, he messes things up. When Jesus comes in our house, he doesn't leave everything the same. He turns, he turns things around. I, I kid you not, when Jesus comes into my house, he flipped things over. He turned tables. When he walked into the temple and saw things that was not right, he called it out. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. Today, I just want you to have a grateful heart. To remember what God had done for you. To remember where he took you from. To remember who you were before him. Sister, you remember they used to have, you, they, they used to have nicknames for you? Hmm. They used to call you things that were unpleasant. Things that seem like made you look fast. Oh, that's a term y'all don't know. Okay. It made you look like a T-O-T-H-O-T? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, know how to say it. <sighs> My brother, before you came to Christ, they, boy, they had names for you. you. You couldn't come around certain people because they called you player. Huh. They called you all sorts of names. They said you were no good. They said you were broke. They said you were disgusted. They said you were finished. But the moment Jesus got a hold of you, boy, he made you look so well and so swell. Everyone, everybody wanted to be around you. My goodness. He took away the things that people hated and he turned it around and made you look brand new. Oh, thank God for who he is. He came into Simon's house, the former leprous man. This former leprous man came in and invited Jesus for Jesus to eat in his house. The Bible said while Jesus laid out about to eat in the man's house, this woman came in. This woman came in with an alabaster box. When you study it, they tell you this was a very expensive box. This perfume that was in it, uh, the fragrance of it. They said you had to save over a year's salary. To be able to afford a perfume like that. The average salary in the church is about, I would say, 90 to 120,000. Could you imagine saving that? Not to buy a house. Not to buy a lucid vehicle or a Mercedes. Not for anything fancy or some red bottom shoes. Or maybe some Gucci suits. But just so you could buy a perfume, a cologne, that you were saving for yourself. And now you decided, you know what? I'm not going to even use it on myself. I'm going to pour it on. Why? Because she remembered where she came from. This is the same woman that we're anticipating that was caught in adultery. That Jesus came in when they tried to stone her. Huh. I was telling them in the 9 a.m. service, when they're about to stone Stephen, they, used to, they took their coat and folded and put it at Paul's feet before they stoned him. You can imagine this same crowd. They're used to it. We caught one. They're about to stone the woman. And Jesus coming to be able to say, he that is without sin. Cast the first stone. And when they put their stones down, Jesus looked up and saw no one. And he asked her, where are they that accuse you? He said, they're not here. He said, hey, if they're not here to accuse you, neither do I. Go and sin. No. This is where I want to pause right here. Because this is where a lot of us, the gospel stops. Is where they drop the stones. But we forgot Jesus said, go and sin. Because for some odd reason, after Jesus saves us, we continue to live in sin. After he sanctifies us, we continue to live in sin. My brother, how could you continue to smoke weed after God had saved you? 
My sister, why are you still shacking up when God has delivered you? My brother, stop cheating on your wife if the Lord has set you free. But for some odd reason, you keep thinking this house that you're in, that it belongs to you. And I'm here to tell you, the house that you're in, it belongs to God. Because the Bible says this temple belongs to the Lord. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Bethany is translated for it to mean house of figs. Meaning house of men. This is where uh, bananas grow. This is where figs grow. This is where you find it. But it's also at Bethany when Jesus was going in and he saw the fig tree. And he, when he came to, to get a banana, he could not find one and he cursed it. He said, this is where I should find figs and yet I don't find it. So therefore, you will no longer produce. They will burn you. And by the time they return, they found that tree dwindled to nothing. I say this because this is the church. But for some odd reason, God is not in it. This is where God's supposed to dwell. Would Jesus come here and say, this is my house? Or would he say, I don't find myself here and curse it? And when I'm talking about church, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you and I. Are you really going to accept Jesus and live for him? Or are you just going to live for yourself? The church is the house of God. When are you going to stop living in sin, church? I want to preach messages that gives you hope for blessings. I do. I want to preach the, these beautiful sermons for you to be able to, you know, just be blessed. And highly favored, but God keeps telling me for me to tell you to repent and come back to him. Why is that, church? That means some of us are not living right. And if he's bringing this message to you, that means he wants you saved. If this is God's house, then why does it not look like God? God's house is beginning to, to look like a club. We play club music. We play club beats. We dress like we're going to the club. And we act like we're in the club. This is God's house. This is who we are. The moment you leave the parking lot, your language changes. It goes from praise the Lord to... Uh, Your vocabulary dwindles from five-letter words to four-letter words. <laughs> this is God's house. And you keep playing in it. You keep thinking this is a social club for you to find a chick. I'm glad you're here because God is about to capture your heart. You keep thinking this is play hour because they look young, they don't know the Lord. You're about to be shocked. You're about to have a rude awakening to realize that the church is holy, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the church. A whole bunch of people that are in the church have been hanging out with God but don't know God. That's amazing to me. The disciples have spent time with Jesus. This is the week before Jesus had died. This is the week when this is happening. This is the week before the passion. This is the week before he died. So that means they spent over three years with him. But yet they see someone worship. And the Bible said when they saw the woman coming in when worshiping, they had an indignant spirit. That came in them. Well, you could be in church and still not know God. You could be in church and still not saved. You could be in church and still don't re re boy, really love God. I got a feeling there might be a whole lot more Judases than Peters in the church. 
there might be a whole lot of doubting Thomases uh, than there are, you know, uh, Nathaniels in the church. Uh, I want you to understand uh, uh, that this is God's house, church. You are God's. You belong to God. Is that not what the message God sent for you through, uh, through Minister Lynn this morning? This is God's house. You are God's house. You belong to God. And yet you want to be cute. My sister, if this is God's house, then you don't need to dress sexy. Can I talk to you this morning? Oh, I know they're not going to like me today. Marcellus, I know, but I'm okay. Your sexiness will not get you a man. Your sexiness will get you a date, but it will not get you a husband. My brother, can I talk to you today? This is not the place for you to post up. So let your eyes lurk around to see what's going on. If you want to do that, go to the gym. This is the place where you need to fix your eyes on God. We need to fix your eyes on the cross and see what God is able to do and for him to deliver you, set you free, to remove that spirit of lust out of you. This is God's house. Oh, I know, I know, you don't like this. I, I, I told you God twisted it for me. Because the disciples did not realize that the woman was worshiping. Because they felt like it was too much. You ever start worshiping and people think you're doing too much? You got your hands raised. No, put your hands down. You're crying before the Lord. What's all this crying for? I, I, listen, I've come to the point where I don't care how I look before God's presence. Ah, it's not going to be coming down my nose. Let me give God praise. I, I don't care what you think about me. Let me cry before the Lord. I remember what he's done for me. I, I know where he got me from. I know where he saved me from. Um, do you understand what I'm telling you, church? This is God's house. You are God's house. I want you to say it again. I belong to God. I belong to God. This is God's house. My sister, there's no reason for you to keep sleeping around if you're God's house. My brother, there's no reason for you to be able to be the community. You know what I mean. <laughs> because you are God's house. When you belong to God, you respect yourself. When you belong to God, your speech is different. Huh. You don't cuss. Your speech is different. Even when you're upset, you don't lose control. Your speech is different. When you belong to God, you don't hit women. You belong to God. Your hands should be used to praise God and lift up holy hands. When you belong to God, you don't need to use profanity. When you belong to God, you don't need any extracurricular activities to satisfy your flesh. You just go before God and he fills that hole. Yeah. That worship. You keep thinking worship is just singing. Worship is actually what you do outside of the church building. It's your lifestyle, how you live. It's how you serve God. It's how you respect your parents. It's how you love your wife. It's how you raise your children. Wait, 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 wait. Because everybody keeps thinking this is ministry right here, preaching. This is not ministry. I was telling somebody that earlier. This is a task that God has given me. Ministry is my wife and daughter. Ministry is to make sure when the trumpet sounds that they both come on. Let's go. We're going to go to heaven. That's ministry. This is a task that God has given me. That went over your heads. This is called the ark. So let me use Noah. Noah, when God gave him the task to build the ark, that was a job that God gave him for a hundred years. But the ministry was to make sure his wife and sons got in the ark. Your purpose is to make sure Anyone that is following you follows Jesus. Yeah. You point them right back to Jesus. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not me. It's the Lord. 
It's got nothing to do with me. It's the Lord. But if you want to keep taking the glory, no, stop taking God's glory. It belongs to God. The woman came in with the alabaster box and poured it on Jesus' head. The disciples got upset. Listen to me, church. Stop worrying about church people that get upset with how you worship. I, I, I can't keep being cute, church. Can I get comfortable? I, I appreciate y'all. You know y'all all right. Thank you, my brother. I, I want you to understand I can't continue to look cute to give God praise. I remember what he's done for me. I remember what he brought me through. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Can I be honest with you? My mama used to tell me stories about when I was a little boy, how they used to do voodoo magic to try to kill me. They even sent one day a cat to try to take my voice. The moment I started talking as a three-year-old, uh, they started, uh, slowly my voice just started going down, going down. And my dad heard the cat in the back of the house. It's crazy. He went after the cat with a machete and tried to chop him. And that's when my voice came back. Uh, understand uh, that the, the, the enemy has been trying to kill you. But if you made it this far... Then somebody better give God some praise in here. You don't pay my bills to tell me how to worship God. The woman saved her own year's salary to be able to give it to God. And yet the disciples thought they had the audacity to think that they could tell the woman what she needs to do with her money. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? You buy a car, somebody comes and says, well, I wouldn't buy this one. <laughs> you have a housewarming party. <laughs> they get in your house, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I see, yeah, that's nice. But you know, the one down the street, listen, shut your mouth. You didn't give me a penny towards it. This is why when God has a blessing, no one should say anything concerning it. If you're not going to praise God with me, then close your mouth. If you're not going to worship, if you're not going to lift your hands, if you're not going to open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, then I don't want to hear a thing. You need to close your mouth. My goodness. Man, if I was getting married today... I wouldn't invite anybody. <laughs> what? I got married over 21 years ago. You know, what I did was walk around, check on everybody. You know, how's everything going? You know, heard people, well, the rice wasn't that good. <laughs> this is U.S. This is not Canada. You didn't pay to come to the wedding. You're eating for free. You didn't give no gift. And they're complaining about the food that they're eating for free. That's I, Oh, my goodness. Listen, when God has blessed you, just give him praise, church. Remember where God took you from? Boy, they used to have nicknames for you. Fast Susie. You remember your, boy, you remember your reputation back then? Even in college? Huh. Boy, they say you like a football team. You, you just, you're like running backs. Y'all get it tomorrow. My brother used to have a bad reputation, remember? Remember? They used to call you weed head. Because you were always high. Even when you weren't high, they thought that you were high just, cause, just because you were so high. But yet God came in and he turned around and changed your life. Made you brand new. It's amazing to me. I met some of my high school guys, you know, uh, a couple weeks back. I looked at them. They're like, yo, man, you ain't changed. You still look the same. I said, nah, man, I gained a little weight. The 
They said, yeah, but your face is still the same. You still look strong. I'm like, yeah, you know, God has blessed me. And then they were like, well, what have you been doing? I said, well, God has blessed me. I said, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm a spiritual firefighter. I said, you're a what? You're a firefighter? A spiritual firefighter. I said, I'm part of the EMT. The first response team for heaven. were still confused and then I had to keep going down like but but what do you do well I said I counsel <laughs> said so you're a counselor I'm like well I'm, I do a little bit more than that and by the time I got tired of just <laughs> I said I passed her they're like oh okay I said what do you do I said well you know I uh, I work at this high school, da da da, and I'm like, all right, cool. The other one worked at a company over in Fort Lauderdale. I said, all right, cool. I said, man, but you guys got gray hair everywhere. I'm like, man, what 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 happened? I said, life. I said, yeah, life be lifing. But then they wanted to know my secret to staying young. One of them remember, I grew, I grew up on Chillingworth, so they remember my parents' house. They remember, oh yeah, oh yeah. They're like, yo, your parents still stay? I said, yeah, man. And they remember back in the day? I said, yeah. I said, we, we, we used to. We did. I said, yeah, I know. You still remember Oka? Mm-hmm. But I said, God has changed me. I said, the reason I'm able to stay so young is because he keeps renewing me. I said, the moment you come into Christ, he makes you brand new. I said, I promise you, by the time you come to Christ, he will change your life as well. They're like, yeah, I don't believe in this religion stuff, this God stuff. I said, my brother, listen. Whether you believe it or not, one day you will either bow down before him as a servant or you bow down to him forcefully as a demon. He said, well, we'll see. I said, well, God bless you. But if the Holy Spirit ever touches your heart and you need prayer, man, here's where we're at. I want you to understand, you don't look this good because of your mama's genes. You don't look this good because your daddy was such a good looking guy. You look this good because the Holy Spirit is in your life. You look this good because God has blessed you. You look this good because you've been worshiping him. Because others that don't have Jesus, the moment they get into trouble, they, go, they run to drugs and alcohol. But you, the moment you get into trouble, you run to God and say, God, here I am. Come and deliver me. And this is why he says this is your reasonable worship for you to be able to worship him. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a holy sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your spiritual worship the King James says your reasonable worship meaning it's the least that you could do then it goes on to the next verse says do not be conformed when the woman with the alabaster box changed she didn't go back to her pimps she didn't go back to her dudes she didn't go back to her, her lesbian lifestyle. No, I don't know what she was doing. All I know is the moment Jesus said, go and sin no more, she changed her life around. Today, your life's got to be changed. We can't remain the same. Your life has to be changed. The world that knew you has to know a different you now. 
We can't be the same. We can't remain the same person. We have to change because the God that is in us, huh, he calls for us not to be conformed to this world, but for us to be transformed. Somebody say transformed. transformed. First, by the renewing of your mind. For your mind to be renewed, you have to change your environment and the people that you're around. Oh, that went over your heads. See, you can't expect to be wealthy and hang around a whole bunch of poor folk. You can't expect to be a saint and hang around just a whole bunch of sinners. Especially when they're not changing or you're not changing them, they're changing you. When you are trying to change the renewing of your mind, you got to change your scenery. You got to stop watching certain things on your phone. Oh, certain movies on Netflix, you got to quit. Certain, listen, certain subscriptions, you got to give up. It's crazy. I didn't know Triple X could have subscriptions. How you believe you got a subscription to... I'm going to ask that again. How you a believer and you got a subscription to? As soon as a new download come, oh. <laughs> your email is manofgod at gmail.com. I'm sure the people that's behind the firewall, they're like, man, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. <laughs> Child of the Most High at Yahoo. <laughs> For my old school, I love Jesus at AOL. <laughs> it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If God's going to accept your worship today, then we need to understand that we have to live a holy lifestyle. We have to live a holy life, not just within these four walls, but the moment you leave for you to be able to worship the Lord Jesus like never before, where your yes is yes and your no is no. For you to follow the word of God, his laws and precepts and live for him. Then it's the little Betty, come on back up. I'm going to have her lead you back into worship. This time, I don't want you to worry about anyone around you. They mean nothing to you because they don't help you with your bills. I want you to worship God like never before. To give God your best because today might be our last day on earth. Jesus might come tonight. He might come tomorrow. So let's give him our best right now. Are you ready, church? Are you ready to give God your best right now? So I, listen, tell your neighbor, let me worship, let me worship, let me worship. Listen, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Don't try to text me. I need to put the phone aside. It doesn't matter. Let me worship. Because this is the moment that we're going to give God our best. Not just our voices, but also in our lifestyle. Are you guys ready to worship the Lord? Are you ready to worship the Lord? No, no. I, I can't see people that's ready to worship. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Before she comes up and leads you, I want you to talk to God and say, God, forgive me for whatever it is that I've done. Forgive me for my sins. Uh, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole. Lord God, I'm about to open my lips. I'm about to give you the fruit of my lips. Uh, God, take it, everything out. Uh, take the things that I've done. Uh, forgive me, Lord God. Cleanse me. My sins may be red as crimson, but you're able to make them white as snow. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Ah, uh, let me worship. Let me worship. Let me worship. Talk to him. Talk Talk to him, talk to him. Yeah. Oh, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your very word in me oh you are my daily bread yeah. you are my daily bread 
sing your very word. The next part is so simple and beautiful. And I, I'm desperate for you. I really need you, God. And I, joy so that I so that sing cast me not cast me not from your presence please don't take and 
So really quickly, if there's anyone in the house that does not know God as your personal Savior, the Word of God says that if you be ashamed of me, I then will be ashamed of you in front of the Father. I believe that there's someone in this house this morning that is to give their life to Christ. And we do not want to miss that opportunity so that you can come. So if that's you, move quickly and move boldly. I need you to obey God quickly. Don't think about it. Delay obedience is still sin. If you're in this house and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, come now. If you feel like you can't go by yourself, tap your neighbor. Say, neighbor, would you do the walk with me? I want to get right. I got to get right. I can't yet. I cannot leave this room without knowing who he is. If all heads, all eyes closed, I know it's someone in this room. Come. Is there anybody else? Listen. Today is the day, not tomorrow. Today is the day. If you do not know without a shadow of doubt that if I left this parking lot today and my life was ended in a car accident, that I know for sure that I would be with Jesus, come. If you're not 100% sure that if I died today, I'd be with the Father, come. Come, 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 come. He wants you. Yeah. God wants you. He wants you. He wants you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves, he loves, yeah, he loves you, he loves you, he wants to remind you today, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, come on, guys, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten souls that belongs to God forever, forever. If it's you, come, 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 come. Pastor, would you come? Come, y'all. Here's the good news. It doesn't matter how many times you have to come back to the altar. It's always open for you. For the people that's standing in front of me, I want to remind you, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that even if you made your bed in hell, he'd be right there with us. But here's the good news. You don't have to be there anymore. Today's a new day for you. Today's a new day for you. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, you'll never be the same because he loves you. So lift your hands and repeat after me. Say, Lord, I come as a sinner desperately in need of a savior. Today, Lord God, I pray that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness, that you would make me whole before you. Father, I pray that my heart becomes in alignment with you. Anything in me, anything connected to me that's not like you, I pray that there will be a spiritual disconnect from anything that's not like you. Today, God, I declare I am yours forever. Come on, say it again. Say, today I declare that I am yours forever, forever. For the people that's getting saved today, say, I'll never be the same in the name of Jesus. Can you guys celebrate God? That God snatched his children out of the enemy's hand. Come on, 
Y'all should be tearing up this church that God, come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is looking for a true worshiper. You have to worship God and in spirit and truth. Like Pastor Madoshe said, if you are complacent, you cannot worship God in truth. For some reason, People act like they have amnesia or Alzheimer's. They don't remember what God has done for them. When you are not true to yourself, you can't worship God. Imagine God take you from Haiti. True. You have to remember where God took you. You came from in a, in a place where nobody know that the name of that town. Or, but everybody came from out of place. If you are worshiping God that way, you're not worshiping in truth. Because you lie. God is looking for true worship. You have to be honest with yourself. Don't be complacent. Listen, person, can't worship God because they don't give value to what God has done for them. It's okay. God took you so far. God changed your life. You were not that way, but God changed you. God transformed. You have to remember where God took you from. Don't be complacent. God said, John 4, verse 24. God is a spirit. And those who worship him, of our Lord Jesus. The love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit may be with you. 